All right, welcome back to the channel. Warhammer Man back in the studio, and today we're taking a look at this week's pre orders, and they are live. If you're new to the channel, make sure to like and subscribe for daily videos, reactions, reviews, news, painting, modeling, conversion tutorials, pretty much anything to do with tabletop war gaming. All right, so first off on the list, we have the Breaking of the Fellowship. Uh, so 90 bucks for this pack right here, and it is the nine members of the Fellowship of the Rings. Uh, so it comes out to about 10 bucks each for those. It's okay. Um, it's I, I imagine that's probably in line with what you would expect for, you know, an entire box of characters. Uh, so 90 bucks for those. The poses aren't bad. Overall, look pretty dynamic. Now, keep in mind, too, it's on a smaller scale, though. And, you know, there's one dwarf and four hobbits. So five of your models out of the nine are pretty, pretty small. Uh, so you guys let me know uh, if that is a good deal or not for the Lord of the Rings players out there. Uh, next, we're on to some classic Space Marines uh, returning for a limited time only. So first, we have the Space Marine Captain in Terminator armor. Uh, this is an OG model right here. Uh, looks good overall. This one's held up pretty well. 35 bucks for him. Then we have Space Marine Captain Master of Marches. Uh, Captain Master of Marches. Uh, this one's pretty cool. Obviously, has like a unique look to it. Uh, all these characters that came out at the same time, the Master of Marches, uh, Master of Rites, Master of Relics, and I feel like there was one more also, are uh, pretty slick. Uh, the Space Marine Master of Rites, uh, 35 bucks for him as well. Still not a bad looking model, uh, unique for sure. And then we have the Space Marine Captain, Master of Relics. He's got the Combi Plasma and, uh, you know, a big, it's like a vehicle's, uh, it's like a vehicle sized like satellite dish <laughs> on his backpack there. It's definitely interesting. Uh, so 35 bucks for him. Uh, those aren't too bad of models, honestly. I know there's people out there. People have expressed interest in them in the comments. So uh, glad to see everybody able to pick those up. 35 bucks a piece. Whew, pricey. Uh, but uh, not, you know, it's in line with what you would expect from GW. Next, we have the librarian with staff and book for 35 bucks. Uh, okay, it's not bad. Decent little pose here, I, I would say. Then we have the librarian with sword and bolt pistol. Uh, this one is pretty bad. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's wrong with this model, but something's not right. Whether it's like the proportions or what. I think maybe the head is just like way too big. And then next we have librarian in terminator armor. Uh, this one again holds up okay in the range. Um, I like the idea behind it, but the actual execution not as much. Uh, then we have the librarian with force axe and plasma pistol. Um, yeah, it's okay. I, I, none of these models are particularly interesting to me, but I've also been playing the game long enough that I watched these models when they were new and then could get completely outdated and go away. And now we've watched them return. So, uh, you know, just because I am not enthralled, uh, by these, uh, you know, five, 10 and 30 year old, <laughs> well, maybe not 30, five, 10 and maybe 15, 20 year old models, uh, does not mean that you can't be so if you're after one of these to finish off uh some og collection or whatever i get it uh, if you have a new collection probably not going to look too great in there so uh, all right and then on to the actual new stuff new stuff so we have the battle tome disciples of zinch limited edition this is the special stuff all the contents inside are the same uh, just a fancier wrapping paper uh, and then we have the battle tome disciples of zinch 55 bucks this is everything you need to bring your zinch uh, into the winner's bracket theoretically then we have the War Scroll cards, Disciples of Zinch, 3350 for those. Uh, obviously a nice tool for people that do enjoy uh, quick reference stuff. I personally like not having to use my book nonstop, uh, and I do like the physical War Scroll cards and stuff. Um, but, you know, I can understand not spending 35 bucks on those. Honestly, if you're resourceful, you could probably make something similar for far cheaper. Uh, so next we have the Vanguard Disciples of Zinch. So we have talked about the value in this. The price is 130 The breakdown on this, and if you didn't see it, I actually did a corrected price on this because I didn't realize normally you would get 20 of the Acolytes of Zinch in a box uh, for 55 bucks, and this only includes 10 So once I redid the prices and everything, it comes out to $188 worth of retail value for 130 and that comes out to about a 31% discount. Uh, so it is a nice discount. Not quite as nice as what we thought, but right in line with what you would expect from the Vanguard boxes. Uh, to tell you the truth, I have not really found the Vanguard boxes to be particularly great deals. 
uh, most of them in comparison to the start collecting box or other purchases just don't really have the appeal now that doesn't mean none of them are good it's just my experience my opinion etc uh, so then we're on to some of the stuff from last week we have the disciples of zinch dice set or no this is new 38 bucks for those uh, Vorbis Conspiracy Paperback, 16 bucks for that. Goliath Gang Tactics Cards, 1650. I would have thought these would be sold out by now. So if it was anybody but Goliath, maybe they would. Uh, but interesting to see that they are still around. So maybe GW is printing more of the Necromunda stuff so it's not selling out. Or maybe people just don't like Goliath. Probably a little bit of both. Uh, so next we have the Orlock Ashwains Gangs Dice Set. These are my favorite dice. These look great. I would love to see more dice like this. I love how they just look dirty and dingy and grimy. Uh, the Ashways Nomad gang dice set are pretty cool as well. A uh, little less desirable uh, just because I don't love the contrast between the actual colors of the dice and the colors of like the pips on the dice. Uh, and it's the same thing with the Iron Head Squat Prospectors. Uh, nice dice overall, but I don't like the contrast between the colors. And for me, that's just very, very important because the number one purpose of your dice is to roll them and be able to tell what they say. So if they don't roll well or you can't read what they say, that's bad dice. Anything else, you know, pretty much acceptable after that. Uh, the Goliath dice set, the orange. I'm not a big fan of like the orange and the yellow and stuff that they do for Necromunda. Uh, we got Cinder Dark Burning, the actual book. We've got the Goliath Maulers. We've got Leftover Lord of the Rings, Battle of Osgilia. Uh, keep in mind that is still on pre-order. But if you do pick this up by whatever their date is, um, it will uh, make it before Christmas. So. Um, and then we did see the vehicle dice sell out as expected. Uh, not a surprise as those have only been available in the uh, box set, the Ashways box set. So a lot of people didn't want to spend $300 on a box set, but did want these dice. Uh, so at 18 bucks, I mean, that's an absolute steal. Uh, so uh, definitely not surprised to see them selling out. And then we have the Nightbringer 20th anniversary. And then of course the Leagues of Votan box set. Uh, so yeah, that was sold out literally um, you know, almost immediately. And it started off in the U.S. at least immediately at one copy restriction. Uh, but the stores had no restriction on how many they could purchase. Uh, so it's clear, obviously, if you go on the internet or whatever, you see that uh, there are tons and tons of online resellers or retailers uh, that basically picked up like hundreds and hundreds of these boxes uh, and then are just selling them onto the open market. Uh, so it does make it hard for people to get a hold of one of those boxes, but they are selling them at a discount, typically more than you would get from Games Workshop. Well, definitely more than you get from Games Workshop, but typically more than a lot of people can find. So how do I feel about that? I mean, I would rather see Games Workshop restrict everyone. Uh, you know, I understand stores can't be restricted to like one copy or 10 copies or 20 copies for a big store. They might sell 50 copies or something, but there's no reason a single store should be getting two, three, 500 copies, and then just turning around and selling them online uh, immediately day of release when everybody else is, you know, left out in the cold. So that's my opinion on it. I would rather obviously see stores make a cut of the money than Games Workshop just get all of it. Uh, but I don't like when Games Workshop just secures their sales to make sure everything is sold out, but doesn't worry about the customer. Because there are a lot of customers who want to order straight from Games Workshop. I don't know why or what the reasoning, but there are reasons out there. Maybe they don't have a local store near them. Maybe they don't normally have a discount or have ability to get discount. Maybe they just want to support Games Workshop specifically because, you know, they love them. Uh, I don't know what the reason is, but there's definitely reasons out there. So, uh, so for me, this is not a particularly exciting week of releases. I sense from the community that is the case as well. I'm sure it's nice for a small group of people, uh, the ability to pick up the uh, Breaking of the Fellowship. Uh, and also all of these OG Space Brain characters. Uh, none of those are appealing to me at all. Uh, and then on to Zinch. Um, not a Zinch player. Uh, so again, not really appealing to me. Um, I do think overall the Vanguard set is decent. It's better than some. It's worse than some. It's okay compared to the Start Collecting box. Uh, I'm sort of just neutral on this overall. I am still a little bit intrigued by this Vorbis conspiracy though. For some odd reason... I don't really read too much like fantasy um, like books. I typically stick to more uh, like educational stuff. Uh, and then, you know, obviously codexes and all that kind of stuff. I like to read the lore and everything. Uh, but there's something about this uh, that sort of appeals to me. So if anybody picked up the Vorbis Conspiracy or read it or, uh, you know, is familiar with it, uh, let me know what you think of it. Obviously, no spoilers because I'm thinking about actually picking it up for 
uh, just some like light entertainment reading. Uh, so yeah, let me know. Uh, but I guess we'll go ahead and wrap it up there. Not a ton of excitement. A uh, couple of the uh, leftovers from last week still available. Uh, but obviously, as predicted, uh, we did see the Necromunda dice sell out almost immediately. We saw the leagues of Votan Army set gone almost literally immediately. And then, of course, the Nightbringer 20th anniversary. So uh, if you do like these type of updates and you want to be plugged into the pipeline, always up to date on your reactions, reviews, and news, as well as countless painting, modeling, and conversion tutorials, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. It's absolutely free. Uh, let me know down below what you're going to be picking up this week, what you're exciting about, and uh, if you have any responses to any of the questions I promoted during the video. Always like to hear back from the community. Uh, that being said, going to go ahead and wrap it up there. This is Warhammer Man Studios. I am, of course, a Warhammer Man, and I'm out of here.